Okay, so I pushed the button and it shut the video off. So here's video number two. Um, so we're gonna make a side. So what I would do is go to file, um, doc, nope, nope, not that one. I'm gonna go to file and document properties. Now mine, so I've got this set up for 18 by 12, 18 wide, 12 inches high. I'm gonna try and turn that off, I don't know. And so that, that's basic. And the reason I do that is I'm not necessarily gonna make a 12 by 18 sign, but I like to have like a reference point. So what I'm gonna do is just type in some letters here and I'll do, I'll do the same thing. Basically run through F-A-S-T. That's my whatever default font that is. And one of the things is really cool here. I went on Premiere Plasma. I asked a guy, some guys, hey, what do you guys, where do you guys find your fonts? A guy turned me onto a page. I downloaded a ton of cool fonts. So thanks, thanks for that, for the guy whoever helped me out. Um, but what I do is in Inkscape, I'll get my thing and I'll say, okay, I definitely want it 18 inches long, but if I make it 12 wide, that's too much. So I just kind of eyeball it. It looks good enough. Now, I've always struggled with letters in Inkscape, like trying to make them part of the picture, not separate layers and stuff. So some of the things I do, and I don't know if this is the right way, but I go, I, I click on it, right? So like right now it's not selected. I'll go to my arrow and I'll click on it and I want it selected and I'll go uh, object to path, right? And then I'll go object and I'll go on group. And now you can see I've got I've got four different letters instead of one word in font. So these are now each individual pictures versus just a font, which is, is separate. That's a totally different thing. So if I wanted to like put a picture down here, like my company logo, because that's a, my name, my company is fast. Uh, if I want to put a logo down here, I could drag across the logo and the letters. It would select everything. And now I'd go to path and go to union. Now it's a picture. It's just one picture not a bunch of different ones. And you can start doing things from there. Um, one of the other things you could do, um, like this mess here on a router, even on a plasma table, this would look like just a complete mess. And you'd be trying to get all your stuff off there after you've already cut the metal. You can go here, click on this guy, and you can start deleting some of these nodes. This, and you have to be a pretty patient person to do this. But, um, and then you could get rid of that. And now the, the torch doesn't have to cut all that. And it's probably gonna look way better than what my, my cutout came out because I didn't do that. I was just wanted to see what it looked like as it was. So now the next thing I do, I, I, so that, let's just say I'm done. This is, how, this is what I wanna cut out. I go to file and I click save as. I've always saved it in SVG in case I wanted to go back and change it. And I would just call it F-A-S-T and I click save. And then I would also save it in, in DXF. And you can see I've saved it there already, DXF and SVG. And I hit save, it's gonna, yes. Yeah, I, uh, I don't wanna replace it because I've already done it. Um, so now we would have our logo, our picture, whatever we wanna engrave, saved in both formats. And I'll show you why, that's, why I do it that way. So let's say I go to open the sheet cam. I'm gonna close this and we're gonna redo it so it looks, so you can see the whole steps. Um, you go to sheet cam, maybe, and you open up. And this is your basic sheet cam. This is like as if you were going to do a um, plasma cut. So the first thing you got to do, you're not going to have this because I created this. This is a, uh, a rotary tool. So you're going to come up to this little blue guy here, and it's going to say create a new rotary tool. So boom, you click on that. All this information right here, I stole it off the internet. <laughs> I went on to like websites and tried to Google it and figure out what people were doing to set their tools up. Um, on probably really expensive tables, I don't know, um, you can have your sheet cam talk to your Mach 3 full time. Like even like when you're working in Mach 3, you could go to sheet cam and you can make adjustments. It will automatically do it in Mach 3. I would never do that that way, but some tables you can do that. Um, on this one, we want to do, I'm cr hypothetically creating this new tool, um, and you could do clockwise, counterclockwise, or off, and it would, and you could actually control your spindle rotation, and then you can also set up, the, these are my default parameters. That's the diameter of my bit, that's the length of my bit, which these, these are really, um, irrelevant if you manually change your bits, um, and then... This, this one is important, 0 0.06, that's your depth per pass. 
0 0.06 would be uh, a sixteenth of an inch. Um, if you had that at like 0.6, you'd probably burn through bits. Um, and I'll, and I'll, when we get to that point, I'll, I'll show you how that matters. This feed rate, that's, that's, again, I took this off the internet. I ran a couple things. This is really slow. Um, but that, that's how I set up my, my tool. So I'm gonna cancel this and you'll see my rotary tool 15, right? So it's set up for all that information that you saw. So you would now have a rotary tool. Um, but one of the things you have to do in order to tell SheCam to create G-code for rotary tool versus uh, plasma cutting, you have to go up here to options and click on machine. Now, you're, if you're just doing plasma, it's gonna say jet cutting, right? Cause that's, that's what it would say. It includes plasma, laser, and water jet. You gotta switch this to rotary cutting, right? So you would click on that. Now, if you ever wanna go back to uh, plaid, you gotta remember to go back and change this. Otherwise, you're gonna have problems. You're not gonna know what happened. Um, then the, here's the part that was, I don't wanna say it's hokey, but um, but it's hokey. Uh, so you go to work, work po or post processor and you gotta pick what tool you wanna use. Now, typically this is set up for Premier Plasma, um, something or other, uh, floating head. And this, this is, gives you the THC and all that stuff. You don't want THC when you're doing routing because it's not how this thing works. Um, but I, I messed with this thing. I tried plasma rotary. I tried uh, Bosch rotary thinking, ah, it's just a router. It doesn't really matter. But because the Premier Plasma table does not have a separate Mach 3 function, my old table had it. I'd have to switch Mach 3 to rotary and back to plasma when I was switching. This one doesn't do that. And, Honestly, after going through it now, I, I can see it doesn't really matter. Um, but before I knew anything and the table came 100% ready, I, I didn't know any better, so I just thought that's the way it was. Um, but thanks to the tech support from Premier Plaza, the guy got back to me right away, so good on him for that. Um, he checked out my settings. He's like, oh, you got to put it on Mach 3 Plasma, which doesn't seem right because you're doing rotary, but Mach 3 needs to be, um, isn't really set up for rotary but Mach 3 Plasma is a very generic G code. So switch that to Mach 3 Plasma. I know that was a little long winded. And then, okay, so now you're in sheet cam and you're set up for um, importing a picture that you wanna carve out. So just like any, everything else is just like doing plasma cutting. Import your drawing and I'm gonna do the fast, I'm gonna do DXF. Uh, well, actually I'm gonna do, here's the SVG file. And this is how this is gonna look when you open it right? This has to be one-to-one. -one. Whatever your says, change it. Otherwise, that's scaling. Whatever you're, if you're importing an 18-inch picture and you put one-to-two, it's going to be 36 inches on here, or down here when it imports, right? Um, so that's for your SVG. Now, no, I should have canceled it. Um, so there it is. That, that's, and you can see all these little nodes. This has to create a path in G code and your router is gonna go up and down and up and down and, and hit every single one of these little stupid nodes because we didn't clean it up. Um, but I'm gonna go to file. Um, this is the other way. Now, if you go DXF, back on my other table, um, SheCam didn't import SVG. That's how long ago that was. Um, I had to import only DXF. So um, that's how I've always done it. Um, so let's do that. Let's say you're like me and you're just stubborn and. You just do things the way you've always done. So this is where it's a little screwy. Now, this messed me up for a while. And again, somebody on the on the Facebook page helped me out with this. And I was clicking inch because that was my that was my sizing in uh, Inkscape. And he's like, no, I do custom. So I did, and originally this said like one to 24. And whenever I was importing, the, the picture was coming out 50 times the size. So by doing inch, it was really, for some reason, messing up. You have to do custom, and you gotta do one-to-one -one scaling. And then you can click on that, and it imports your DXF. Looks almost exactly the same. It probably is exactly the same. So from here, you, it, this is just like um, plasma cutting. You have inside and outside cuts, and it, it doesn't really matter on the wood unless you're gonna cut all the way through, which before you do that, you should probably do a bunch of YouTube videos because when you cut all the way through wood, pieces of wood go flying you know, because you're, you're using a rotary tool going 15,000 RPMs. Um, but if you're just engraving or doing stuff like that, these inside and outside cuts are, are not as relevant. 
um, until you you go to do your operation. Now, in plasma cutting, you would just basically cut the lines, right? That's how this works. And all these little dots, it would it would it would cut all these little dots, which would be a headache. Um, on routing, if you go to contour, you're basically doing the same exact thing. You're just following. You're just tracing the lines. Um, so this is where I was telling you these settings matter. So let's say you want to cut a super deep. Let's say you've got a, a one inch piece of wood. And you're like, I want my cut to be half inch deep. I don't know why you would, but just let's just say that's what it is. Um, this setting here, this 0.06. Actually, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make my life a lot easier. Let's say you want to go 0.6 inches deep, right? Actually, let's say 0.62. Um, so what this is gonna do is the when you set your Z axis, which you have to set your Z axis with the router to zero on the wood. I mean, it has to just be barely touching. And that's your zero for your Z axis. Your first cut, it's gonna dive down 0 0.06, a 16th of an inch into the wood, and it's gonna cut. And then it's gonna keep cutting. It's gonna keep, keep going over the same exact cut until it reaches 0.62. So if it went over it 10 times, you'd be at 0.6 and it would keep dropping 0 0.06 each time it goes to make the new cut. So the first cut, it would cut at 0 0.06. The next cut from your zero, it would be cut at 0.12, then 0.18, until you get all the way to 0 0.60. And then your very last cut, your 11th cut would be 0 0.02 to get you to 0 0.62. If you don't set this right, you could probably really screw up your bit or jam up your system because if you had that at 0.6 and this at 0.6 and you drove your router down 0.6 of an inch and it tried to make a cut at 75 inches per minute, it's probably gonna smoke your bit. So this is what it was on the internet. So I'm gonna go with that for a long time until, you know, until my, and see how long my one bit lasts. Um, so let's click okay. So now you basically, this is what everybody has seen with plasma cutting. Now, now that's great and all, but let's say you don't want that. Let's say you wanna do, um, let me delete this. Where, okay, delete operation. So that was for contour. Let's say you want to cut out all the meat inside of here. And that's where you had your inside and your outside cuts, right? So you would go to pocket, right? Now this one has a couple settings. Um, and, and one of the things you want to watch out for, and I don't remember all the way, um, is obviously it changed a lot of information here but the width of your bit matters so if you're using uh like you got to know the widths of your bits because otherwise you could if, if it's too fat like this thing would be ridiculous it's i, I use this because it's cheap from home depot and it lets me do some stuff just to see how the machine operates but when i wanted to if i want to get into some real detail i'm have to switch bits but if your bit's too wide a lot of this stuff is gonna overlap because you're cutting right your your pocket. It's like an inside outside side cut on plasma. So if I click on this and just click okay, you can see like the path is to cut out everything in between those lines. So it even it says here, because of the way we're doing it, some of the features are too small. So um, so I've already created a, a G code file for this. So let's let's go to that guy and you can see it right there, fast.tab. So go into um, Mach 3, uh, I'll close this. And basically I'm gonna reload that G code, okay? Um, and just like everything else, there's my picture, right? And you can zoom in or whatever, it's gonna show you the path and you can, you can follow it. Um, one of the things I was taught on my last system, they always told me, when you're in Mach 3 and the system's doing its thing, leave it alone. Don't be clicking on things. Um, my last one it looked a lot, a little bit different than this. I could change, increase and decrease my voltage right here on Mach 3. And also my feed rates, I could speed up, speed up and slow down right from Mach 3. And I don't see that here. Maybe I'm, maybe I just, maybe this is a different deal or something like that, or it's supposed to be more intuitive. Um, but it, that was kind of nice when I was dealing with plasma cutting and, and I saw it was, it was making too much of a mess. I could speed the torch up and it would clean it up and I'd get a better baseline. Um, but so back to wood, wood routing. Um, so here we are, here's, here's our, uh, we're at 0 0.096. So let's just, this is just like uh, 
the plasma torch. Um, so you use your arrow keys, and this little guy really helps out, and I'll, and I'll show you why. Um, so you're gonna move your move your thing around, and you're gonna find your, your true zero. So on mine, obviously, it was it was somewhere around right right about you know somewhere in here. Let's just say that, okay? So one of the things you gotta know, and, and this really does help when you're getting ready to, to get your Z axis zero, right? You go down and then you're like, okay, I wanna get it as close as I can because I'm, I'm, I'm like cutting a little bit, a 16th at a time. Oh, I went into the wood, right? Cause I went too far. And then you raise it up and your wood gives and stuff like that. One of the things I, I learned a long time ago, and, and most of you guys probably already know this, you can move around your torch with just the arrows, right? Or if you hold shift, it gives you the, and move your arrows, it goes full speed. It moves a lot faster, right? But when you're trying to get your Z, so I'm gonna go to my Z axis here because you really want it to be accurate. Otherwise your depth of your cut, you're gonna have stuff like on this tree of life where it's real thick and real shallow and, and really shallow. And you, you don't want that. You wanna make it sure it's kind of even. Um, so you can zero out your Z axis. And when you're trying to get really accurate, you can go on this little keypad so you can get really close. But if I just hit the down arrow or page down, my Z axis jumps quite a bit. You could just try and tap it and make it less and less, but it still jumps a little bit. Um, but if you hold down the control, this one here, and you could do it on this guy too, but if you hold down the control and you page down and just tap it, you're only moving a thousandth at a time. And when you do that, you can really get it right dead where you want it. You just gotta be patient and and you know and play with it but that, that control thing is holding the control button down really helps you um, zero your z-axis properly um, so on my table like I said I've got uh, my router connected to a switch here um, and then at this point once I had it zeroed I had my z-axis zeroed I would just basically hit start oh I had to turn my router and it would just start doing its thing Right now, obviously, I have the torch. I'll turn it off because I already cut it once. Um, now, I zero the torch this last time about a quarter inch above the wood. So that's why it's not going in because I didn't want to cut it twice. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and stop it. But that's really it. That's the, that's the entire process. And obviously, you can see, um, like, my router is plugged into the plug here so I can later on plug in a vacuum too. And then it would help with the mess. I also have an exhaust fan in here that, an attic fan from Home Depot that when I'm plasma cutting, that helps draw the draw the smoke out. Um, but it's really not a complicated thing. Um, I'm bolting and bolting this thing. It, it's, it's really straightforward. It's literally two bolts for the torch. Uh, you should have four if you didn't break one off like I did to get this off the floating head thing. And then you just basically, they make you a perfect little bracket. And honestly, um, I don't know. I mean, my last table, this one has, it feels like it's, I've got to like, I got to mess with it. It has a little bit of a movement to it that I don't like. Um, so I've got to tweak with that. That's on me. That's probably on my assembly skills more than anything. Cause this thing is, it's pretty stout. Otherwise it's, I just got to tighten up my bearings, but, um, the router you could probably make your own bracket but for the price i mean it comes with the router and that piece alone i can't imagine what that thing costs the plate obviously we could all make that little metal plate that's the piece that kills it you know because it holds that router in place but you can see i've made some deep cuts i've made some shallow cuts um i'm doing some signs for uh some guys i've worked with for 15 years I'm, they're just going to be gifts um and then for my wife she's a horse nut so I've been, and it, there's like a little funny, she has a donkey. So um, you can get some pretty good detail, but it, I mean, it's just like anything else. The preparation is everything. If you have a, a prepped, smooth, flat surface, it's gonna look super consistent. Um, my plan is to do a, um, a more detailed bit on some of this stuff and epoxy pour um, into it and then use this hopefully to replane it um, and, and do some epoxy pour um signs and stuff for some friends um but other than that it, it works good it really does um again this is my first video um go ahead and criticize me if you want i get it um I, i'm sure I, i've missed some stuff and I, I don't know if i've caused more questions than answers but hopefully this helps guys make the transition over that are asking about it and want to give it a shot